Hi, welcome back to Data Mining with Weka. In the last lesson, we looked at uh, classification by regression, how to use linear regression to perform classification tasks. And in this lesson, we're going to look at a more powerful uh, way of doing the same kind of thing. It's called logistic regression. It's fairly mathematical, and we're not, certainly not going to go into the dirty details of how it works. But I'd like just to give you a flavor of the kinds of uh, things it does and the basic principles that underlie logistic regression. And then, of course, you can use it yourself in Weka without any problem. One of the things about uh, data mining is that you can sometimes do better by using prediction probabilities rather than actual classes. Instead of predicting whether it's going to be a yes or a no, you might do better to predict the probability with which you think it's going to be a yes or a no. You know, the weather is 95% likely to be rainy tomorrow or 72% likely to be sunny. Instead of saying, oh, it's definitely going to be rainy or it's definitely going to be sunny. So probabilities are really useful things uh, in data mining. Uh, Naive Bayes produces probabilities. It works in terms of probabilities. We've uh, seen that in an earlier lesson. I've opened, I'm going to open Diabetes here and uh, just run Naive Bayes. Bayes. Naive Bayes. Uh, I'm going to use a percentage split of 90%, so that leaves 10%. Uh, as a test set, and then I'm going to, sorry, 90%. And then I'm going to make sure I output the predictions on those 10% and run it. And what I get here, I want to look at the predictions that have been output. So this is a two class data set. The classes are tested negative and tested positive. And these are the instances, number one, number two, number three. This is the actual class, tested negative, tested positive, tested negative. This is the predicted class, tested positive, tested negative, tested negative. This is a plus under the error column to say where there's an error. So there's an error with instance number two. And these are the actual uh, probabilities that come out of naive Bayes. So for instance, 1, we've got a 99% probability it's a negative, and a 0.01% a probability uh, it's a, a positive. So we predict it's going to be negative. That's why that's tested negative. And in fact, we're correct. It is tested negative. Uh, this instance, which is actually incorrect, we're predicting 67% uh, for negative and 33% for positive. So we decide it's a negative, tested negative, and we're wrong. You know, we might have been better saying, well, here we're really sure it's going to be a negative, and we're right. Here we think it's going to be a negative, we're really not sure, and it turns out that we're wrong. Sometimes it's a lot better to think in terms of the output uh, as probabilities, rather than being forced to make a binary, black or white classification. Other data mining methods produce probabilities as well. If I look at 0R and I run that, then these are the probabilities. Point 60, 65% versus 35%. Oh, and this is the same. Oh, and this is the same. And this is the same. Of course, it's 0R. It always produces the same thing. In this case, it always says tested negative, And it always has the same probabilities. And the reason why the numbers are like that, if you look at this slide here, is that we've chosen a 90% training set and a 10% test set. And the training set contains 448 negative instances and 243 positive instances. Remember the Laplace correction in Lesson 3.2? We add 1 to each of those counts to get 449 and 244. And that gives us a 65% probability of being a negative instance. So that's where these numbers come from. Or uh, if we look at uh, J48, trees, J48, and run that. Then we get more interesting probabilities here, the uh, negative and positive probabilities, respectively. And uh, you can see where the errors are. These probabilities are all different. Internally, J48 uses probabilities in order to do its pruning operations. We talked about that when we discussed J48's pruning, although we didn't talk, I didn't explain explicitly how the probabilities are derived. 
Uh, so the idea of logistic regression is to make linear regression produce probabilities too. Now this gets a little bit hairy here. Remember when we use linear regression for, for classification, we calculate a linear function using regression and then we apply a threshold to decide whether it's a 0 or a 1. It's tempting to imagine that you can interpret these numbers as probabilities instead of thresholding them like that. But that's a mistake. They're not probabilities. These numbers that come out on the regression line, sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're greater than 1. They can't be probabilities because probabilities don't work like that. So in order to get better probability estimates, uh, a slightly more sophisticated technique uh, is used. So in linear regression, we have a linear sum. In logistic regression, we have a lin the same linear sum down here. This is the same kind of linear sum that we saw before. But we embed it in this kind of formula. This is called the logit transform. And the logit transform, this is multidimensional with uh, a lot of different a's here. We've got just one dimension, one variable, a1. Then if this is the input to the logit transform, then the output looks like this. It's between 0 and 1. It's sort of an S-shaped curve that applies a sort of a softer kind of function rather than just sort of 0 and then a step function. It's a soft version of a step function that never gets below 0, never gets above 1, and has a kind of smooth transition in between. And when you're working with a logit transform, instead of minimizing the squared error, remember when we do linear regression we minimize the squared error, it's uh, better to choose weights to maximize a different a probabilistic function called the log likelihood function, which is this pretty scary looking formula down at the bottom. So that's the basis of logistic regression. We won't talk about the details anymore. Let me just do it. We're going to use the diabetes data set. Uh, in the last lesson, we got 76.8% with classification by regression. Let me tell you, if you do 0R, Naive Bayes, and J48, you get these numbers here. I'm going to find the logistic regression. It's a function called logistic. I'm going to use tenfold cross-validation. I'm not going to output the predictions. And I'll just run it and I get 77.2% accuracy. That's the best figure in this column. It's not much better than Naive Bayes. Uh, so you might be a bit skeptical about whether it really is better. So I actually did this 10 times and calculated the means myself. And we get these figures for the mean of 10 runs. 0R stays the same, of course. It's 65.1%. It produces the same accuracy each run. But uh, Naive Bayes, J48 are different. And here, logistic regression gets an average of 77.5, which is appreciably better than the other figures in this column. You can extend the idea to multiple classes. I mean, when we did this with, uh, the, in the previous lesson, we performed a regression for each class, a multi-response re regression. But that actually doesn't work well with logistic regression because you need the probabilities to sum to 1 over the various different classes. So that introduces more computational complexity and needs to be tackled as a joint optimization problem. So the result is logistic regression, a popular and powerful uh, machine learning method that uses the logit transform to predict probabilities directly. It works internally with probabilities like Naive Bayes does. And we also learned in this lesson about prediction probabilities that can be obtained from other methods and how to calculate probabilities from 0R. You can read in the uh, course text about logistic regression in section 4.6, and now you should go and do the activity associated with this lesson. See you soon. Bye for now.